Okay, so uh, we are continuing discussing the Mastering in Sh a Shining uh, a textbook from Hadley Weekend. Uh, we're already in the final section called uh, Best Practices. Uh, we're going to start with Chapter 17. And these are, you know, some general guidelines. There's no really code, uh, you know, in this chapter. Is some general guidelines that the that the author uh, recommends uh, for developing uh, more complex apps, or when we're uh, you know uh, sharing our our code with different different uh, persons in a in a in a, in a team in a project. So uh, the challenges that we have to be aware is that we have to have a clear organization. We have to have some guidelines in how we're going to you know, develop the code and make sure that uh, we set some parameters in terms of uh, maintainability. Okay, so let me see uh, some of the uh, you know, problems that usually uh, pop up you know, when you're doing a, a project or a software development is that, for example, you know, I can't find the code I'm looking because the code is a, you know, is, a, is like a huge file, a blob there, and it has no uh, documentation or anything like that. Uh, something that happens even to, you know, uh, when you develop your own code is that, you know, you leave the code uh, uh, out there and then you come back again after, after a while and you cannot even understand you know, what, what you did. <laughs> so proper documentation, you know, proper, proper uh, uh, parameters, you know, to set, set up your, your variables, uh, document, documenting, which is very important, et cetera. So in this best practices, we're going to talk about chapter 17. Uh, chapter 18 talks about uh, how to develop, you know, uh, functions. Uh, for Shani apps. Uh, package 19 uh, talks about Shani modules. Uh, chapter 20 talks about packages. 21 about testing. 22 about security and performance. But this is going to be like a, uh, a brief uh, a brief introduction to all those uh, chapters. Okay. Uh, so in terms of the code organization, uh, this is a nice, uh, you know, uh, a nice quote from Martin Fowler, which says that any fool can write code that a computer can understand, but good programmers write code that humans can understand. Okay, so it's very important that we're not coding only for us, but for somebody else that you know uh, ha haven't seen this, uh, you know, uh, the, the 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 coding. So it's good to have certain, uh, you know, certain guidelines uh, to try to, you know, stay uniform in how to develop uh, your code. For example, you know, how do you, how do you call, you know, the variables? How do you call the data frames? How do you call the functions? Okay. And so forth. So uh, this says that being a group programmer means developing empathy for others. So we need to interact with this code base in the future. And one of the things that you can do that usually doesn't come uh, easy, but is to try to document, you know, everything that is not uh, clear uh, to someone that could, you know, could, could be reading this in the future. So for example, uh, the author says some of the guidelines that you should follow are the variables and function names clear and concise, and also, it, you know, it, uh, it, it, it tends to be uniform. How do you uh, name your variables? Uh, you know, using uppercase, lowercase, using the order score, the camel, oh, okay, camel the score, et cetera. So- Because like my- Excuse my, me? Yeah, I, I would like to share my, my experience with the names. Sure. I try to use camel case for global variables. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. And for variables that create inside functions, I use the tidyverse one with using an underscore. So mm -hmm. just when I see my code and I see a camera case, I know this is a global variable, and I right. try not to 
to to mix everything, you know, because sometimes we create no pure as we let we Bruno Rodriguez, no pure functions. So mm -hmm. that helped me to don't miss function. I think they were outside my code. So yeah, mm -hmm. I, I use that and also using birds for functions is really useful. Mm -hmm. So the, the the things that you know we should be you know kind of you know uniform in how you uh, name all these objects in in your code. So it's easy, for example, it's easy to uh, say, okay, yeah, this is a variable, this is a function, you know, this is a the whole module, etc. Okay. So uh, do you have any comments where needed to explain complex bits of code? And usually the rule is that you know. Uh, more comments d don't hinder the the exp explanation of the code. Uh, smaller documentation may hinder. So, you know, try to go a little bit more in the documentation. Uh, am I copying and pasting the same block of code many times? Uh, there's a, there's a also an, another quote from David Robinson. Um, I don't know if you know it, uh, Angel. Uh, yeah. David Robinson, he says, if you use the same block of code three times, that means that you should do a function, okay? Because you are repeating already. If you do, you know, three times an advice, the same advice to a person, maybe you should write a blog, okay? And uh, this is I added this to the to the quote. If you are using three functions, you know, uh, very very uh, in a repeated way. Maybe it's time to write a package, <laughs> okay? So, you know, if you're repeating certain parts of your code, there's ways to try to, you know, modularize it, okay? So you don't, you know, uh, get a, a thousand, you know, uh, lines. You don't get dry. <laughs> right, yeah. And, and, you, and, and you don't get too, you know, too, too, too lengthy, you know, the, the script or, you know, whatever that, 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 that you're doing. And, you know, also it's important because functions are protocols that you can test mm -hmm. and are ready also to share another project yep. and you if you are if you are test to your functions you can certainly speed your updating process mm -hmm. exactly so uh, and one of the things that for example i work in a in a project uh not using r but using python and one of the things that we discuss in one of the first meetings is precisely, you know, what conventions were you going to use? What kind of a structure, you know, on the, how, how are we going to place each of the items? For example, if you develop a notebook, you know, where should it go? If you develop a script, where should it go? If you are going to modularize, you know, certain certain functions that are kind of utilities, how are we going, are we going to do it? So we talk about all the things, you know, had like a, like a dictionary of how we're going to do and then that that saved a lot of uh, you know headaches you know af afterwards because we knew how to write the code so everyone knew what we were you know trying to do okay so it is good to have you know those preliminary you know uh, uh, meetings for uh, avoiding avoiding certain problems uh, later when you have you know uh, thousands of thousand lines uh, of code in different files etc Okay. And did you write those those agreements? Uh, yeah, we put it in writing in a, in a you know like in a data dictionary. Yeah. Okay. You know where you said okay, you know the variable convention is going to be this, the function convention is going to be that. Uh, the the the, the we we named the you know we we developed a tree structure in GitHub, right? You know for the project, and we say okay, we have uh you know data is for is for. Uh, raw data is for process data is for this. Uh, the notebooks are going to be in this place in dev. They're going to be a source code, you know, a, a, a source code uh, folder, uh, documentation, so forth. Okay. No, it's, so, it's yeah, a, because we, we 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 try we try to you know start with the with the right foot, <laughs> with the right foot to avoid you know because you know everyone has its own you know uh, book book you know like a. In Spanish, we call, you know, everyone has his uh, librito, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's about, right. About, about doing things. So now we have to standardize. And it shouldn't be that hard. You know, the only thing that, you know, you have to be aware. Then, you know, it comes it comes pretty easily. You know, later after, after you get the, you know, get the gist, get the practice. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we're going to talk more this, you know, for these conventions in chapter 18 and chapter 19, when we discuss about the functions, how we should write the functions uh, in R and also with the shiny models. Uh, then in this chapter in testing, testing is a whole, you know, it's a, it's, oh, a, it's a whole universe, right? Mm -hmm. Of how to test an application uh, to ensure that it's stable, that it doesn't impact, you know, improperly other parts of your, you know, of 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 your of of, of your whole, uh, you know, uh, development, etc. But it says that you know you should you should have this in consideration when you're doing, you know, uh, this type of pro projects. So one of the things is that. Uh, we should strive to not only test the the functions manually, but also trying to achieve some automation. Okay, because even though it says uh, the author that it takes a little bit more time, but eventually it's going to pay off. Because once you do that the, o, o, automation, uh, uh, you know that automation, then uh, the run the test can run uh, frequently based on any changes that that you do. And that's going to be another chapter, chapter 21, is going to talk, talk about unit tests, okay, that confirm the the right behavior, right, of of each, each of the functions that we have, the integration test, functional tests, and load tests, okay? Um, another thing that he talks about it is about dependency management. And this is very, uh, very common, you know, when you are uh, developing in Python, for example, uh, usually in Python, you work in a virtual environment, right? So for example, you have uh, certain packages that you're going to do, you use, and also you have the versions that can work with each other without any, any major conflict. In R, uh, we have what is called RM, M, right? Uh, which enables you to recreate uh, a reproducible R environment, which is, you know, catching on because, for example, if you want to reproduce some of the, you know, some of the results that you see, let's say, in an article or in, in a package, uh, sometimes you need certain uh, packages or certain libraries, certain packages to be in a specific version, okay? Because if you do another version, it could conflict with, you know, future, future releases. So that's something that uh, Hadley is, you know, uh, is, is uh, addressing here about you know recreating that reproducible environment our environment with our m and he mentions also another package to manage depend dependencies which is the config package this is a new one for me okay i haven't i haven't you know uh, the conflict package is just for yeah. function that have the same name okay okay it's Good. like if you have for example like, i know some conflicts mm -hmm. uh, for example, the filter for deploy. Correct, correct. I yeah. also have a filter function that doesn't don't do anything with data frames. You know, it's mm -hmm. like um I think mathematic function. So when you load the player, it say, like, "Hey, you are masking." Filter. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the warning. And also, okay. you have packages that have the same function name, and one can match another. One example mm -hmm. happens with a data 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 dot table and the player. Both have okay. a between function. Mm -hmm. When you and uh, what function will your code will use? Uh, right. The last package that you uh, load. For example, if I load mm -hmm. first library data table and then a uh, library the player, right. you will use the between from the player unless they use the a W column syntax and you specify. So I don't I don't like the the prefer. I use it sometimes, you know, but mm -hmm. when I realize I can call the function directly from the package name, I prefer yeah. to use that syntax rather than using the conflict package. Mm -hmm. okay. Just in so in that case, there are not many conflicts. And in you are when you are creating package that the syntax that they recommend you to use that double column up uh, you see the positive conference it's yeah. like positive double points and then yeah. conference. the double column the double column. The, the, the double column syntax yeah. use that so I don't use the conflict package for that reason okay 
Okay, but you know, at, at least he mentions it here, you know. So yeah, of course, it's it's, 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 it's on package. Is his right. own book, right? You need to mention it. Yeah, I, I also had that. You know, I, I realized it when you load the uh, deep layer and also the la the library called Mass. Uh, you got a conflict with select. Yeah, okay? mm -hmm. and I remember that I had you know a headache. Because the select was not doing, you know, what what, what I wanted. <laughs> and what here, when here, I realized that I load mass after the player, you know, is superseded. The the, yeah. the select with the mass select, and the mass select does not have to do anything. You know, it doesn't <laughs> do anything. You know, uh, similar to the player. It, it, so, yeah. so so I I I I learned the hard way. <laughs> you know, with those conflicts. Okay, but yeah. <laughs> but you know, in, in aware, there, yeah. there there are no many. You know, there are just few cases. No, yeah, right? but but they could be. You know, they, they could they could bite <laughs> in, the, yeah, in, yeah. in the in the wrong place of the body. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but you know, the, the manage the main problem is to track the 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 change mm -hmm. in functions arguments. It, right. it's, it's not likely to change the default. You know, that will mm -hmm. change your 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 resource and that's maybe the main challenge because it, it changed the whole library it will only break your code and that's it and you know that mm -hmm. but the main problem is when your your code keeps running without any warning because they right. just change a default and it will run exactly the same but you won't get the same results yeah that's I, maybe I, the... I remember that the error that i got you know from the select you know it didn't it didn't you know say okay you know you have a conflict or you have this or that you know it was just i know there was some you know i i don't understand the argument something like that i don't understand mm -hmm. the arguments that that you are giving me and i said but what and then you know when i realized ah is that this library has another select okay so mm -hmm. yeah I, I i had to i had to dig in you know into that that problem but then, also you, know, you... What, 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 once you once you're aware you know that's it mm -hmm. you know you know how to how to fix it <laughs> i know also that Lubridate mm -hmm. have is union and also base R have union function. Yes. To you yes. to to you to combine uh, right. unique vectors, mm -hmm. and the point is like they use S three based on it's like it only works for data uh, dates values they vectors and the, and the other ones use base R, mm -hmm. so. That was really good, you know, <laughs> like like masking those right. those function. Yeah, but to to track the packages, and mm -hmm. also in the long term, it's better because something I have understood is, Gram have binary just for the law the last versions of R. As soon mm -hmm. as, uh, for example, you are using a R three point something. Mm -hmm. uh, R doesn't have the binary from those packages. Yeah. And you got, yeah, you don't explain uh, using R band maybe or maybe remotes. What version do you want to install? Mm -hmm. You said that it will break your code because right. uh, those versions were working from that, uh, from that specific version of, and that specific number of libraries. So as your code gets ordered, if you don't pick your libraries, you won't be able to run your code anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's because right, yeah. your CRAM assures a compatibility with the current version of R. So far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That you know, that's important, you know, in the in the if you compare in the in the with the Python work. <laughs> mm -hmm. But hey, you want to be in CRAM, you need to be sure that your package is compatible with the current version. The current, yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah, that's the, why. The, I mean, in, in Python, it's another you know, it's, it's another mess because you have different versions of Python, and within that, you know, from each library, you have also different versions that sometimes work with nice with other versions or not. So it, it's it's important to create that virtual environment. Okay? It's beta. It's like yeah, and no, no, yeah. It, it, <laughs> that, there's no way that you can you know run a Python project without creating first you know that virtual environment. That there's no way. Yeah, okay. in, in not, R, not like in R, R, that you can get away with, you know, just loading the packages. I know you know it will work because of CRAN. but uh, yeah, but, but yeah, but you know, eventually, also you could have certain, you know, certain uh, conflicts. 
Okay, within within. If you if you use a stable functions, wow, well, mm -hmm. you can even copy paste your code. Uh, three years ago, it will run even in the current libraries. Right. I have, uh, you know, that capacity of don't changing anything mm -hmm. <laughs> in yeah. a long run. Exactly, but 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 it's because of cram. Okay, uh, in Python, there's no cram really. Okay, the most you know, there's something something that is is getting out there is called I think it's called poetry. Okay, mm -hmm. that is 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 starting to try to you know tell you if there are libraries that are in conflict within your version of Python are within you know the libraries. So eventually, when you get everything together, then it freezes you know the the, the, the the environment there. Oh, and it's it easier to work, but you have to replicate that that environment. Okay. No, no, uh, great. Yeah, but but uh, it, it's impossible in Python. <laughs> you have to first create your environment. You know, from uh, usually I create it from scratch. You know, to don't have any headaches. Mm -hmm. I create it from scratch. You know, from the requirements or the environment, the YAML, etc. And then you know, I start running running the code. No, no. It's not something that in R, you know, is usually. It's not a. It's not necessary. Yes, yeah, and it's friendlier in that play, in that sense. Correct, correct. But you know, for for reproducibility, uh, you know, reasons, uh, is is good. And in the in that book from Bruno, Bruno Rodriguez, yeah. uh, he has a whole chapter of uh, of working with RM, you know, to recreate the environment. So you don't have, you know, you 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 uh, you know, guarantee that your code is going to work. You know, if you use the RM. Yes. Okay, so the next session is a uh, source code management, right? And uh, in this one, you know, the the solution is to you know is to use Git, really. <laughs> uh, you know, Git is the is the is is the is the way to go. You know, to uh, you know, get, try changes, of course. Get, get 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 you get your code, you know, out there, you know, in a repository, public, you know, usually public repository, and also. He managed the version control, right? You know, for you, you don't have to, you know, worry about that. And um, you know, it gives you gives you kind of a secondary backup, and also it gives you more tools like uh, GitHub Pages, GitHub Actions, etc. Okay, and that one, you know, he do, I don't think he's going to cover it that much uh, here because you know he's going to tell you that you know that just you know get again to Git, get get. Work work with uh you know the 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 functions that we provide and you should be okay. <laughs> and then the last basically the last uh the last the last section here is about continuous integration, uh CI/CD continuous uh, deployment. That once you're using a version control and have a robust set of automated tests, you might benefit from continuous integration, which is a way to kind of automate you know uh, any changes that may come you know in in the future okay and you can use the github actions which is something that i have to you know that i i i, I should be learning soon because i'm going to be working on another project more of a you know a data pipelines uh creation project and uh yeah probably will be you know checking this uh github github actions github action is it's not as hard you know because mm -hmm. We have at least our studio have created many templates that really okay. helps to make the work. Like, hey, you have you want to install libraries? Don't worry, we have the script here. You just need to pass the the arguments, and that's okay. it. Okay, okay, good, so, good. So you, they already have the the the, the template scripts. Yeah, you know, they have that. many template scripts at least for okay. R. That's good. I, I don't know that you know the ones for Python because I haven't seen them. But, it's mm -hmm. what it's not as hard as you might think. It just and, and you just read it and you start copying the, the jammers mm -hmm. and it gets easy to to run code and also even to to run in, in some schedule and maybe by your daily branch. Okay, good. I, mm -hmm. I think you can you can start running your own uh, pipelines, maybe mm -hmm. to maybe two or three days reading is not like an ability that you need to and I have many bot plots uh, many blots talking about that so okay good and many resources and and, and the, I know that the main <laughs> the main reason you also check the because this book is mm -hmm. rendered running a integration process right 
Right. Yeah. You 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 see that, for example, no, because I this is more advanced. <laughs> John mm -hmm. have more advanced process because he's referring it to his own script. Mm -hmm. I have I checking. He have a, a template script and he just need to to date that template mm -hmm. based on the R template. It's like right. Uh, he don't need to to date every every part by one one. But you Correct. go to that template, you will be able to see how he does the the, how he runs this book because this is a pipeline also he don't expect mm -hmm. us to run the the whole book every time correct yes yeah the, just the parts that that it needs to be to be updated depending on the change and maybe you know for python if your project is in python maybe the mm -hmm. the introduction to statistical learning in python maybe that's the example that you can pick right mm -hmm. yeah Okay. Mm -hmm. you get, so yeah. that, that that's something that I'm, I'm going to be, you know, uh, I'm going to be studying and you know trying to learn it very more. <laughs> yeah. Because of the of, of the need, you know, for for you know recreating some you know some some APIs and some you know uh, data flows that need to be you know recreated. I think it's going to be I think it's going to be in Amazon though. Okay. So you know we'll, we'll see. Yeah. In AWS. Okay, and then uh, he talks about the code reviews, right? That, uh, you know, you have to have, you know, this, you know, code review, uh, you know, process to catch the bugs, uh, learn, you know, uh, uh, certain certain ways of programming with, uh, you know, techniques from other programmers, uh, facilitates the cross-pollination and knowledge sharing across a team to eliminate having only one person to understand the app and the resulting should be improving the reliability of the code. Okay, so he says, have a questions, you know, for reviewing the code, for example, you know, uh, you know, how are the function structures? Do they have the correct, you know, naming convention? Is the code confusing? You know, it's hard to, you know, hard to, hard to read or hard to follow. Uh, which areas should be, should like change to the future that we particularly benefit from automated testing and doing so forth. You know, some basic you know, uh, uh, quality related questions that we have, you know, when we are uh, reviewing, uh, you know, the product of others. And uh, he recommends, you know, a couple of resources here, okay, how to, in, a, in, in GitHub, uh, Thoughtbot, uh, code review, and mm. also uh, this one, engineering practices, a review, et cetera. So basically that's it, you know? I mean, the, the, it's, it's like the, the, the good practices. That you should be aware when you are working with, you know, other people, or even if you're working on your own, you know, on your own stuff, at least try to, you know, be aware that maybe you'll be the beneficiary of something that you're going to leave there for 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 a time, and then you have to come back, you know, to to revise it or or make changes. Uh, and let me tell you, you know, it, it has happened. Sometimes I, I read something that I did a year ago and I said, wow, who did this? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, yeah, because, you know, you, you evolve, okay? And sometimes you say, but why did I do this instead of that? Well, because I didn't know or something or I didn't document enough, et cetera. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a continuous uh, process of improvement that you I should know. be aware. And, and the best way that I tell you, the best way that it has, you know, those uh, breadcrumbs that you create eventually, they're going to help you to recreate the process that you were, you know, working at that time. Okay. No, you know, when you are writing your, your script first time, maybe mm -hmm. you are not aware why you are not commenting, but maybe you read it again some day after you will, you will start noticing, Hey, I didn't comment this. Well, I need mm -hmm. to break this function. It's too, it's too big. I need mm -hmm. to, to be able to test that. Right. I know that to me in my experience so far uh, testing have been a way to make that possible like okay I need mm -hmm. okay I create this function but I need to test that oh my god right. I cannot test this I need to write this function <laughs> this mm -hmm. is not, not clear uh, it's like you are forcing yourself first to create a reproducible example a reproducible minimal example to test your code so mm -hmm. you you cannot run your test 
uh, with everything. You need to, okay, this is the example I'm going to use. And they are the most important case I want my function work. Mm -hmm. And you are starting you, oh, this is the covering argument for this function. Is this the, right? Uh, it takes time in the, mm -hmm. in the, Package book, Halle said that sometimes you think, is this even a good function? But mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes good functions need, it's, sometimes it's harder to create mm -hmm. the test than creating the function. Correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the test you have to, you, 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 you know, you have to put some, some, uh, you know, great stuff there, you know, some, some brain matter there. Okay. Yeah. So you know, to it's try hard. to get, to try, try, try to make, Make sure that you are testing, you know, what you want, okay? And that that test is going to help in the future maintain the integrity of that function and what, what it does. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, at first it's a challenge, but then, you know, you get the, you get more practical and it's easier. So it, it, it becomes part of the, of the software. Of the world from, yeah. Project. Yeah. Of course, no. Having good practice is... As in, you know, if you are not having good practice, you it's like you know enough to be dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's like right. uh, I'm realizing that I'm passing, you know, that that aspect of my life. Like, hey, mm -hmm. I was dangerous programming. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. I'm, I'm yep. becoming. <laughs> no, and, and I tell you, when you start working with other people, you know, with other, you know, uh, ways of doing things, then you see the benefit of, you know, setting. Uh, you know, general guidelines like the the chapter says. You know, set, set, setting setting the conventions that are going to use and how are going to use it. And if everyone follows it, it makes it so much easier. Okay, because you know what you are doing is going to be understood by the rest of the group, and what they're doing, you are going to understand it better. Okay, and if you have any you know any doubts or any questions, you can pinpoint you know where where your doubt is. So it's 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 easy. Okay. No, that's how many people are working in that project with you? Uh right now we are three. Well, oh that's that's yeah. an interesting group. Mm -hmm. that's, how yeah, you we can have a, we, we have a guy that you know has a certification for for AWS cloud computing, which mm -hmm. you know I'm interested in getting. And the 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 you know the president, uh he has many years, about 20 years of experience in software development. And I'm the, you know, I'm kind of the junior one. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. there. Okay. But, uh, but, but it's good. You know, it's, 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 it's good stuff because, you know, you learn from, you know, other people that, you know, that they, they have gone through, through that process already. So, no, no, that, yeah. that's an amazing experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I do my, you know, my, 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 my best, you know, uh, practice there is more, more about business analysis. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh you know more engineering uh more and, and you know try, try to uh uh you know support them through the engineering process project management and also uh statistics also yeah the statistical you know uh uh you know view uh po point of view of all, all this okay so i think that was a good that was a good chat <laughs> I mean, no, it was, there was, it was no really... code, but it's still, you know, it's still good to... to no, no, as you 